Street. Two one. Okay, here we are. It another is day, another dollar. The St. Patrick's Day edition. Aye. Aye I. I didn't wear right. green. I did. No, I got I green socks I on. I don't either, really. Hmm. Yeah, well. Oh well. It is Friday. It's not St. Patrick's Day yet. Don't we got pitch a me. Couple days to. Uh, we got green right there. That's there enough go. green there for anybody. Yeah, another big week on the market. Uh, market keeps going up, but we got a lot of things to uh, to talk about and to kind of look at and see if we can anticipate where the top may be. Or, uh, yeah, crazy. A lot of stuff going on. So we had CPI and PPI, which are both the Fed's big, the Fed's big inflation indicators. They both came out this week, and we have the Fed meeting next week. So PPI came out on Thursday, and that is the last big inflation report until the Fed's meeting next week. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then trends. Uh, trend is probably the most important thing we, we can do in terms of charts. I just want to take a look at a few charts on that. And the bonus chart is basically the dollar and the I fund. It's one of the most straightforward um, correlations, actually inverse correlations, and it, it makes it really easy um, to reallocate in and out of the F, uh, I fund if you choose to do that based on what the dollar is doing. And then C fund weekly charts, I got a couple charts about that. So Tuesday, Reuters comes out with this article, uh, gasoline, shelter, gasoline shelter costs boost U.S. prices, meaning inflation is going higher, but it says inflation is still slowing. So all this talk about inflation, the, the point is um, the, the market at the beginning of the year was pricing in six or seven interest rate cuts for the year. Um, as inflation keeps going, as, as inflation does not continue to fall, the odds of the Fed cutting rates decrease, right? And supposedly the stock market is, quote unquote, pricing in this idea that the Fed is going to cut rates. Um, so as inflation stops decreasing, um, the odds of the Fed cutting rates multiple times this year also decreases um, and somehow the stock market keeps going up. It's, it's kind of unbelievable. So out of that same Reuters article, here's kind of what that looks like. The blue line is, is supposedly everything in the economy. Um, and the, the orange line is everything ex- excluding food and energy. Okay. So it's a chart of inflation of all items and all items excluding food and energy. And you can see we peaked up here at 9%, right? Everybody knows that. We peaked at 9% in the summer of 22. And then inflation has been falling ever since, which is great. But it stopped falling sometime in early 23. And it's been basically flat ever since. So that's a problem. And if it starts to tick back up, which is everybody's fear right now, if inflation starts to tick back up, then the question isn't going to be when does the Fed start cutting rates. It's going to be does the Fed uh, hike rates on the next meeting. And the next meeting is uh, next week. Nobody expects the Fed to hike rates, um, but it's very likely that they don't lower rates at the March meeting either. Um, this this sideways movement here for quite a while is a problem. And we got, I mean, it doesn't look like, like here's the, the 2% Fed target. Right, it doesn't look like it's got that far to go down, but on a percentage basis, it's a lot. It's it's they're calling it the last mile. It's it's very unlikely that inflation gets down to the Fed's target. Uh, a lot of economists are talking about what no, the new normal is going to be somewhere between three and four percent. Um, so somewhere in here, uh, if inflation stays there and rates stay somewhere between three and four percent, which has all kinds of other Implications down the road, but so this is what from the same Reuters article they're saying, you know, CPI was three point two percent, right? So that's everything averaged together. Um, other goods and services at four point seven. You know, housing was a big one. It, it keeps going up, um, and you can see these 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 are the sort of the categories that they use um, for CPI. What's interesting is when you pull back within some of those categories, 
right? And, that, and so the Kabisi letter is, is talking about some things that actually affect us as normal people. Um, and when they say inflation, it's year over year. Okay, so last year, um, you paid 20% less for car insurance on average than you're paying this year. And if that rate, whatever that rate is, so say it's, you know, it drops to 10% uh, next month. Let's say that one drops to 10%. So rather than paying 20% more year over year, now you're only paying 10% more year over year. So you, the amount you're paying is still going up. It's just that it's going up at a slower rate. It's, it, which is why, you know, we, we, we that live in the normal economy don't understand, you know, inflation's coming down, but prices keep going up. Yeah, because we're not in deflation. We're in decreasing inflation. Right, we're still in inflation. It's oh, yeah. just not going up as fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Welcome to economics. Uh, both core CPI and headline CPI come in hotter than expected. Um, it's the third straight month that the readings are, are hotter than expected. The markets have priced out, right? Rather than priced in, they priced out three of the six interest rate cuts that they expected to happen um, in the last three months of or. That's happened over the last three months in 2024. The crazy thing is, but the, the market keeps going up, right? Even though they originally priced in six cuts, now they're only pricing in three cuts, but the market keeps going up. Um, and affordability, obviously, is still getting worse. Then on Thursday, we get PPI. Okay, so CPI is consumer inflation. PPI is production inflation. It's basically the uh, input cost to companies. And that also came in much harder than expected. So how, how does the market respond to all that? This arrow is after CPI. Okay, that was Tuesday. The market closes at new all-time highs on Tuesday, e even with CPI um, <laughs> much harder than expected. Thursday, uh, it was down a little bit, but recovered really well, right? Opened up here got as low as the bottom of that tick, but closed, you know, not at the top of the day's range, but not too bad. Um, Friday gap down, but that's, it, the market's at the top. The market's, the market's moving higher, right? The trend obviously is still up. Even though we had two really bad inflation reports this week, it didn't do anything to break the trend in the market. That, that's really the bottom line. Um, so the market seemingly doesn't care about anything. And, and like we talk about all the time, it, it really doesn't matter. You, there's all kinds of fundamentals that say the market should have rolled over a long time ago. Um, it's neither here nor there. As long as it keeps going higher, uh, you want to be in the stock funds when the market's going up. Okay, trend. And so how do we know when the market's going up? Um, this is what a trend looks like in a bull market. Okay, so this is the bottom from COVID. It's very simple. When price is going up, right, it comes down. As long as the low is higher than the last low, you're good. Then you're looking to see if price gets higher than the last high. If it does, you're good. And so in a bull market, all the way along, you put in a high, a higher high, higher high. It just, the higher highs keep going and the higher lows keep going. Now, there, there are uh, different time frames, right? You could say you put in a low, a high, a low. You know, this low got lower than that low in those couple of days. You know, the, we, don't, we don't have the luxury of working with, like, intraday like that. You, ha you have to have a, a little bit of a, of a broader time frame. So you have a low, a higher low, a higher low, higher low. This, you're starting to get suspect, right? It is a little bit higher than that low, so you're still good. Price keeps going higher. This low, even though this was a big correction, this low is still higher than the last main low back there. This was a concern because the high was lower than the previous high. But the, this low was higher than the last low. So you're still in the uptrend. And it keeps going. That's what, ha in a bull market, um, as long as you have higher highs and higher lows, you're in good shape. Okay? In a bear market, it's the exact opposite. 
You got a top, a pullback, and a lower high. So once this ruled over and got below that low, that's confirming a new downtrend, at least in the short term, even though it's within, still within the longer term uptrend, right? That's how you're getting an idea that this is failing because of that lower high. And then once that starts, you have a high, a low, lower high, lower low. This high, you know, it was kind of a head fake because it got above that high. But then we get a much lower low, lower high, lower low. Now here we get a lower high. And that was the beginning of that uptrend. Didn't last that long, and we still get lower high here. So you're looking at it on multiple time frames. But once we put in a low, uh, lower high, so we're still in a, in a downtrend as far as this goes, but then we had a higher low. So that was the first big, uh, I'll say green flag. It's not a red flag because in this case it's going higher. But we get a lower low or a higher low here versus this. And then we got a higher high versus that. So now we are definitely in a new uptrend. So what I'm saying, the bottom line is, we don't have to freak out about even big moves like this, right? The problem is, if this low gets below that low, right? Or, or if this high gets below that high, now, now you have something to be concerned about because the trend is changing. And so this is where we are right now. Right? This is the bottom in October 2022. You had a rally, a pullback, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high. Even though we had this 10% correction in the summer, we still got a higher low than here. So as these things start to spread out, the problem becomes now we're, we're way up here. We could pull back to here. Right and still have a higher low, and this this trend would still be going. Right, so it's it all depends on your time horizon. If you if you want to say that the longer trend is going up and the market always goes up, yes, we could have a pullback down here to forty two hundred, and still be this this the trend is continuing. But this would be an awfully big drawdown if you took it. And then the sh in the short run, basically, you're looking at these ones, right? You got you have a high, a low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, right? It just keeps going. So the first indication for us is going to be when we get a lower low, right? Market comes down, we put in a lower low, that's the say than that low. It comes back up and gives us a lower high. If it breaks below this low again, now we have a trend change. And there's no reason to, to carry it all the way down to here. Right? Does that make sense? No. I mean, it does to me. <laughs> Those of you out there, uh, let us know. Yeah. When, whenever we say something like that, of course, Jerry is asking me, does it make sense that we go off? But that's a great time for you guys to think, hey, I got a question. Put them in the comments section. We yeah, love definitely. questions from you guys because it helps us figure out what, what we might be missing. Yeah. And also, you know, gives us other stuff to talk about. So it's great. Um, I just wanted to point that out because um, we usually say that at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no, I'd like I, to say that is in the in the middle where maybe you're still watching. Yeah, the questions are great. It definitely helps me figure out where where people are at and kind of what to focus on. Absolutely. But yeah, trend following, higher highs, higher lows. The trend is up. Lower highs, lower lows. The trend is down. Um, and it's just a matter of the time frame that you're willing to look at that within. Okay, bonus chart. DXY is the ticker symbol for the dollar, okay? It's a really straightforward inverse relationship between the dollar and the I fund. So this is the dollar, okay? It's a daily chart, so each, each tick um, is one day. And this is, the orange line is the I fund. So here's the bottom from COVID. As the dollar goes down, the I fund goes up. Okay? 
dollar starts stabilizing down here and then starts moving higher. When the dollar goes up, the I fund goes down. It's, it's got a really, it's not day for day, but it's got a really strong inverse correlation. When the dollar goes down, the I fund goes up. Okay? So it's, it's a lot easy. Well, you, you want to track both, obviously, the I fund and the dollar. Um, we're tracking the dollar for a bunch of different reasons, but you can see very few times do we have the dollar going up and the I fund going up. That rarely happens. And we can see that the dollar rolled over and the I fund really started going up. So when the dollar goes down, the I fund goes up. When the dollar goes up, the I fund goes down. So here's the dollar, right, going back to the low in 2008. If we just connect the trend lines, right, you got a bottom, a high, a higher low. So the dollar's going up, right? A high, a higher low. Okay, we have higher lows all the way along uh, the way, which is how we're getting um, this trend line. So where are we right now? Kind of in no man's land, it looks like, but we are still in a long-term uptrend in the dollar, okay? Which, which means it's a long-term downtrend in the iFund. So if we break that down a little bit, we have this triangle pattern forming. Right? We have higher lows and lower highs. And so you get this triangle. So the question is going to be sometime either bef before we get to the tip of the triangle, does it break to the upside or does it break to the downside? Okay, Because if it breaks to the upside, that's bad for the I fund. If it breaks to the downside, that's good for the I fund. So if we put this uh, was the trend line that I drew, and all I did was clone it to make a parallel line, brought it up to the highs to make this line. Okay, so it gives us a channel. If you're looking at the channel, we're at the top. We have some kind of ABC correction to the bottom. ABC back up to the top. ABC down to the bottom. Back up to the top. So what am I looking for right now? ABC back down to the bottom. If, if I was guessing, guessing is a bad word, but, but the history of this w would indicate that the next move to the dollar is to the downside until it hits that line. Could we get something like this where, you know, we still kind of go sideways to up before we start going down? Yep, absolutely. But it seems like the next big move in the dollar is to the downside, which would be good for the iFund. So that's kind of the, the backdrop and how you'd use the dollar versus the iFund. Okay, C fund chart. This one's going to get a little bit nerdy, but um, I kind of like it. So this is the ADX indicator, average directional index. Okay, so what I did was the average directional index is actually a line which I took out of this, and the line is the combination of the red red and the green. That gives you the average direction. But, but the green is buyers coming, green is buyers, and red is sellers is the easiest way to look at it. So when the buyers are coming into the market, the green line is going up, sellers are leaving the market, the red line's going down, price is going up, right? That makes sense because buyers are coming in, sellers are going out, and price is going up. That's how it works. At some point, you get to a peak. You get to a peak in buyers, and you get to a peak in sellers, right? And then, and then the sellers start leaving, the buyers start coming in, and price goes down, okay? So at this peak in 2018, we had an extreme in buyers, right? That was 50 in buyers. We don't see that anywhere else in this chart. It was an, it was an extreme in buyers and an extreme to the downside in sellers. So everybody's out, uh, the sellers are all out of the market, the buyers are all in, and, and now we're at the, the peak in price. So if you continue along, the peak in price tends to correspond to the peak in buyers. Okay? But it doesn't always do that. So in this case, in 2020, 
Um, we're going into COVID, right? It's before COVID. Price is still going up, right? This is a weekly chart. So price is going up for another one, two, three, four, five weeks. But the buyers are leaving, right? When, when price, when, so I'm looking at a, the peak in buyers, and I'm going to come up here and looking at price and going, okay, price is still going higher, but the buyers are leaving. Something's not right. Right? So we had a four or five week advance notice that the, the buyers are leaving the market. And the sellers are, are, are coming back in. And we had the same thing at the top in 2022. So here's November of 21 in price. And that was a big peak in buyers coming in. Right? Okay. So where we are right now, I just drew that trend line, the black the black line is connecting that trend. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's on on the really the 10 week moving average line, but I just connected the lows from all the way back at the October this is the October bottom from last year. Uh, buyers had been coming into the market. Right? Strongly. This is a pretty high peak at, at uh, it was like 40 at the peak. But it has definitely peaked. Right? So buyers are starting to leave the market. But the price keeps going higher. Okay? So there's no way to know exactly when the top is going to be, but the top is coming. <laughs> it's the same thing that this was telling us back here. Okay? So if we drill it in a little bit, this was the top in going into 2022. We had a very clear peak in buyers coming in. But price kept going up. And the buyers are leaving. Right? And price is still going up. It's telling us that a top is imminent. And that was it right there. And where we are right now, that trend line is really strong. So until that trend line breaks, we're good. But we're just forewarned that price is continuing higher and the buyers are leaving. Sellers are not yet coming in. That's going to be when, when this thing trend line breaks, it's going to be on the sellers coming in. I really like this um, indicator, as yeah. you know. Yeah. Once Jerry kind of walked me through this a few months back, um, I use it a ton for my individual kind of stocks and ETFs uh, when I want to kind of, I don't want to say play around because it's real money, but like, you know, with a little a, a, a little chunk of change to try to help me kind of get, um, you know, get better at these um, trend changes. Yep. And it is a great way for you to get a heads up on a trend change. So let's say you've, you've, you've built your stack of indicators that say, if all this happens, I'm going to sell or buy. And then you need something to give you a little bit of heads up in case, you know, generally speaking, your, your, your sell, sell trigger in particular is going to be a little late. Like some, a lot of things will, will have to have yep. happened for you to sell. And something like this can give you a heads up to go, you know what, all things considered, the buyers are leaving, this buyer's going to leave too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done it. And, it. and it has played out well more often than not, if you see a big dip in buyers, now that doesn't mean to say, particularly when you're talking about an individual stock or, or you know, a, a ETF, that it will turn right back around. It can, yeah. But that's that. All, all of this is speculation and risk, right? When it gets, particularly when you get down to an individual, you know, company or an ETF. All I'm saying is I've found it very useful. So if you guys, you know, rewind that, go back and look at it a little bit, uh, go do some research on on ADX. There's there's a lot of ways you can use that one little indicator, and I think it's handy. I really do. When I when I'm when I'm talking to people about you know getting their selves getting themselves started off with a little stack you know of of, of things to watch, I'm always you know build your, the, the other things are you need first like RSI, MACD, CCI. You need to build those pieces. You know your your 20 day moving average, your 10 day, whatever you're going to use, right? This really comes like after that, I yep. think, right? Yep. Is that the be best way of explaining it? Yep. I mean, you wouldn't yep. count these in one of your kind of hardcore indicators. You know, if the line crossed X, do do this. 
Not really. No. It's just giving you a sense of where the market is going, where the buyers and sellers are going, not the whole market, where the buyers or sellers are going on this particular thing. And if the buyers are leaving and the sellers are coming, you should pay attention. Yeah. For for me, the the most important thing is this 20 line right here. Um, Unfortunately, in this... In this case, we are so deep into the sellers right now at, at nine point, you know, three one. The sellers, the, the um, there are very few s- people trying to sell this, right? So the sellers are all out, and when they when they do, let's see, where's a, a better example? The problem is that it will take some time for the sellers to come into the market and get back above that twenty. And by the time that happens, price is going to be down here somewhere. Um, but you get an advanced, you know, you, it, there's two pieces to it. We already know that the buyers are leaving. Now the price is still going up. Okay, it means nobody's selling it, which we can see because the sellers are not increasing. But it's it's just, it's a big, huge red flag. Um, and it can go on for a while. and the And the buyers can start to come back in could do like that. It's absolutely possible, which is why it's this is a, a heads up indicator like, you know, like Conan said, the 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 stack when that when that gets you know, RSI gets below 50, CCI gets below 0, we get below the 20-day moving average line, we'll, we'll have a big break in this trend line. That's really the the trigger. This is more giving us a heads up that that trigger is likely coming relatively soon. Doesn't mean it it doesn't mean it has to, but it it likely is. Um, and then one more, one more chart on the C fund. Uh, last week we talked about, so this was last week, right? That, that red candle on the left, it's called a doji. Um, it just means that price, uh, opened and closed basically at the same level, but it had a pretty big swing to the upside and the downside in the same week. This week, so we're recording the, I I did this chart, say 10 o'clock on, uh, See what time? Uh, yeah, ten till ten on Friday morning. Um, right now, this is like a double doji, okay. And let's say at the end, at the end of the day, um, price finishes at the bottom of the day's trading range. Okay, so there would be no wick on the bottom. We're pretty close to that now. You can just see that little little uh, wick on the bottom there. That's called a gravestone doji. <laughs> okay. Uh, a gravestone doji basically is this. You had a big run up. You, you opened here. The bulls pushed the price up. The bears pulled it back down and closed at the bottom of the day's trading range. It's called the gravestone doji. So last week's doji meant... We have a, the same, about the same length on the upside as we do on the downside, but we open and close at the same place. So the market didn't know which way it wanted to go. This week, if it closes like this on the gravestone doji, <laughs> the uh, candlestick analysis would call for the market to go down from here. Um, but again, it's, this is looking at it at 10 o'clock on Friday morning. It's entirely possible that by the end of the day, you know, we're up we're up here for the week somewhere and then then we're good so um does not pay to try to anticipate this thing i'm just saying you know i'm looking at it on where we are in the week right now um and it's friday morning so we'll see how much that changes but if it stays where it is and closes there um next week could be pretty ugly still got a long way down to that 20 week moving average line so all right Hopefully uh, that one's a little nerdier than some of the some of the other podcasts that I've done, but it just kind of plays out that way sometimes. Questions? No judgment here. <laughs> Couple of nerds at the table. Um, yeah, if you guys have questions, please put them in the comment section uh, wherever you find the video. If there's not a comment section, shoot us an email at support at growmytsp.com and support team will send it on over to us. We love questions, gives us stuff to talk about. And also, yep. if you're asking a question, there's probably a hundred other people that won't yep. have the same thing. If you've gotten this far in the video <laughs> so far, <laughs> the, the thing is, if it hopefully it's coming across, uh, we don't know when the top is going to be in this thing. Yeah, nobody does. Nobody does. And 
depending on which YouTube rabbit hole you want to go down, um, you will ha- you will be convinced that the market is rolling over any second, <laughs> every day, every day, or you'll be convinced that we're we're going to you know ten thousand on the S and P by the summer. It's yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. All over the place. But that's how people get attention is to talk about, the, you know, things like that, the the, 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 the far ends of the spectrum, the yeah. dra- dramatic things. And all we're doing is reacting to what the market does. Now, we'll talk about all the ways that we might try to anticipate what the market does. But at the end of the day, we don't change our mind until the market changes. Right. And, uh, you know, I think we, we talked about this a couple of times in the last couple of weeks where, you know, I, like I tend to lean towards uh, a buy signal you know, on kind of day-to-day information, right? You're trying to catch that that trend. And then, and something like this, where it's the, the trend has been going up for so long, you can't make your decision on any one days of information, one day of information, right? Um, so don't don't stare at it all day, right? right? I just to everybody, <laughs> like, just yeah. take a look at the week, kind of like what we're doing for you. That's why we stick really to the weekly kind of stuff here on the podcast. Now, the, the subscribers, you know, the, that uh, read all of our analysis, we'll, we'll dig in, you know, to the micro level and to the macro level. But for the podcast, we try to stay at the weekly. Why? Because for most people, that's where they need to live, yeah. is in the week to week. And I'd argue maybe even, you know, month to month. If you're if you're really busy in your life, you don't have a lot of time to dedicate to this. But at the end of the day, and you know, to kind of wrap up this, the idea that we've been going up so long, it's not going to be a quick thing. Like it's it's going to happen over the course of a week or two, and you're going to see, oh, it, the trend has changed, yep. and that's time the time to leave. Yeah. All right, guys, that's hope it. you enjoyed the show. If you didn't, uh, share it with your friends. If you did enjoy it, <laughs> share it with your friends. And you guys uh, have a great have week. Have a great St. Patty's uh, Day. Yeah, great St. Patty's Day. We are having a Guinness right about now when you're watching this. <laughs>